everyone, if you're new here to the channel, my name is Ovi, I'm a first year medical student, and welcome to Ovi Med. Alright, so in this week's video, we're going to be talking about research, or specifically about how to get involved in research, how to get started during either your undergrad or in medical school. All right, so for those of you who are already in medical school, um, the majority will already have some sort of level or research background and experience. And in this video, I will cover the basics first and then go in more depth about how you can improve your chances of getting that research position. So just a quick introduction about myself. So I did an undergrad in biomedical sciences and I have worked on quite a few research projects and labs and stuff. So uh, I hope that the tips I'm going to be giving you in this very video um, from my past experience are going to be useful, so I hope you enjoy this video, so let's get to it. Alright, so the way that I'm going to structure this video is by giving you questions that you're going to have to answer in order to secure a research internship position. Some of these may sound obvious to some, but trust me, if you know and write the answers to all these questions and present them to a researcher you're interested in, you will significantly increase your chances of getting that research position. All right, so where do we start? The first question that you need to answer for yourself is why do you want to do research? Why? Is it because of personal interests like extracurriculars? Is it for course credits that you need to do in order to complete your degree? Is it for your CV? Is it because you just want to see what research is like because you didn't have experience before? Um, you really need to figure out why you want to do research because the researchers are going to see right through you when you're doing an interview or in your letter. So by answering this question, it's going to give you a very good idea of how to answer the second question. So the second question is, how much time do you have or how much can you dedicate to research? So this answer will depend on the answer to question one. So if it's for credits, while well, your school is most probably going to have very specific guidelines that you will need to follow in order to have the degree or the completion of the credits uh, that you signed up for. So you first need to define your priorities. So do you have other commitments like work or volunteering? Establish the duration. So for how much time can you dedicate per week or like during your summer? How many weeks can you dedicate to that project? How many months? Then do you need to be paid? This is a very personal question, uh, but can you afford being in a lab all summer without pay? Because if you can't, um, this might not be the best solution for you. Uh, of course, some uh, research labs do have um, funds. There are research uh, grants or scholarship that can apply to, uh, but you need to look that up, obviously. Um, if I'm not mistaken, if you're doing a research project for credits, and you don't get paid since it's pretty much the same thing as doing any other class because it's for credits. Uh, in fact, you might even have to pay to do that research project because you need to pay those credits uh, registrations fees and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, do some research on that because it's different from school to school uh, and it changes based on where you are basically. All right. So now that you have the answer to these two very basic questions, you can now start looking into specific research projects, labs, or topics that might be of personal interest to you. So now you might be wondering, well, okay, I have the answer to these questions, but how can I find a researcher? How can I find a research project? Well, the easiest would be, according to me, just go ask your lecturer at the end of a lecture. Go ask your professors if they're doing active research and if they have a place in their lab. It can be as easy as that. It might be a bit more daunting than like a cold email or something, but at least you will get an answer face to face or some sort of answer in a short delay. And I'll get back to getting answers in just a few minutes. So if you can go ask your lecturer for some reason, or if you don't feel like it, or for example, now all your lectures are online, well, you can go on Google, type the name of your school or your hospital that you're interested in and with research afterwards or researcher. So there are very high chances that you will stumble onto a list of all the different research axes that are available or research departments that are in the hospital or in the school. And under that, you will find a list of researchers involved uh, in each domain. If that doesn't work, well, look deeper. I mean, look at your local hospital, um, try to see your university's website, just dig in these sites and you'll most probably find the list. So this process can be a bit long and tedious, uh, but for most academic teaching centers or research facilities, you will most likely always find a list of the researchers that work there. So that's, I think, a pretty easy way uh, to find research projects or researchers. So now that you found the list, then what? Well, now the hard work begins. So you're going to need to spend quite a lot of time 
on reading about every single lab's projects or every single researcher's interest in order to see if the topic interests you. So this is very time consuming, but there's no other way around it. I mean, you need to put in the time and the research in order to get that research position. Some websites allow you to filter by like research access, like I mentioned earlier, or by departments. So that saves you quite a lot of time. But if not, you will only get like a register of all the researchers and their interests. So that can be quite a bit more time consuming. But let's say you've stumbled on the profile of a researcher that interests you or on the lab and you've read about the research and it sounds interesting. Then what? What I like to do is I just go on PubMed, type their name and read a few of their most recent papers. That way I can have a good understanding of what's going on in the lab, uh, if they publish frequently, if that's something that interests you, you know, having publications. And now that you have a good understanding and idea of what the lab slash researcher does, now you're almost ready to contact them. However, before contacting a researcher or a lab, you need to make sure that your CV is up to date. You can check on the university's website if they have a template or something uh, that you need to use or follow some sort of special requirements. Some universities also have their own research portal application page. So uh, they have like their own app through which you can apply uh, for research projects. So look out for that. So once your CV is up to date, then you're going to need to have your grades transcript because most of the labs are going to be asking you for your grades as well. So now you have your CV and your grades transcript, you're almost ready to contact the lab. So what else do you need, you may ask? Well, you need a letter of intent or motivation or presentation letter, however you want to call it. So there are quite a few different structures you can use to write your letter of intent, uh, which you can find on the internet, but I'm going to share what I personally do. Uh, you will probably find some way better templates on the internet, uh, but that's just what I've been using to secure internships uh, for the past years, and it seems to work quite well. So here we go. All right. So first of all, you need to start by the title or the subject of the email. That's the single most important part, I think, because if you don't have a proper title, uh, that email or letter might never be read. So an example of title would be letter of intent for research internship X, where X would be the name of the research project or something like that. And if you don't know the exact title of the project or any details, uh, just write, you know, the topic at least. So like I just mentioned, cell biology or physiology it can be, you know, a bit more vague, but at least when the researcher is going to see your email and the subject, they're going to know like what it is for. So now then that you have a good title, you can start writing. So the way I like to start is with a hook. And what I like to do is, you know, just talk about a recent paper uh, that they wrote or something about what they did recently. So write something like, oh, I recently read your paper about X and I found it really interesting because of ABC. And then at the end of this little first paragraph, say that you're interested in a research internship position in their lab. So that was the first paragraph. Uh, obviously, before a paragraph, you're going to need to write Dear Dr. Something, their name, uh, or you know, you're going to need to address whoever you're sending this to. So now let's move on to the second paragraph. So here are a few questions that you're going to need to answer. This paragraph is going to be for yourself. You're going to need to present yourself so that the researcher knows who you are. And so the first question, as you might have guessed, who are you? Say, oh, I'm a first year medical student at Trinity, for example, or anywhere, or undergrad, whatever you're doing, present who you are. Then, second question, what is your educational background? If it's relevant, for example, if you have an undergrad, we'll say, oh, I have an undergrad in biomedical sciences, I did this at this university, and now I'm at this university. So this is if it's relevant. Don't write about your high school or something like that, because they just assume that you've been to high school, I guess. But let's move to the next question. So what skills do you possess for this specific research project? So do you have any past experiences in research or something specific about yourself? You need to answer to why you and not someone else, basically. That's what the question is about. So if you don't have any research experience or background, just say that this is your first time and applying for a research position. Um, but despite the lack of experience, um, you have this, this and that skill or something that you learn in your labs at school even, uh, or anything really that you can apply to this specific research project. It could be like leadership skills. It can be like, I know how to pipette because I've done it in like my lab or whatever. It can be anything. Then you can answer that in the same paragraph or do a separate one specifically for the lab or the research project itself. So the two questions that are going to answer is why are you interested in this specific research project? 
And then follow up question on that is why this lab and not another lab on the same topic. So this is where you're going to flatter the researcher and say how you admire their work, etc. And why you want to work with them specifically. And this has to be a personal answer. You can't just give out some general answer like, oh, well, I see you have a lot of publications and you're famous. So I think that would be good for me for my CV. Yeah, no, red flag. Don't write that. <laughs> So how do you do it then? Well, a good way to show your personal interest in that research is to make it personal. Find a story or something that shows how much it means to you. It can be past experiences, how much it would mean to you to have um, this researcher as a mentor, or how much you value your implication in research from a professional point of view. Uh, it can be literally anything, but just make sure that it's a personal answer. And then you're gonna close that letter or email with something uh, like, oh, I look forward to hearing back from you. You can also add your availabilities for like an interview if you feel like it. And obviously don't forget to add your CV, your grades transcript to that email, uh, your letter if you wanna do it as PDF or whatever. Uh, and the most common way of contacting researchers is just by sending a cold email, which you would have found on that website where you found the researcher's info with the research lab and the project and interests and whatnot. So as you might have guessed by these questions, it's really important for the researcher to have as much information on you as possible. After all, they receive quite a lot of applications from many students, and if some of these elements are missing, they might just not feel like sending you another email asking you about those, they would just choose someone else instead altogether. So by having all these informations about you and that nice letter, the researcher will have an idea of who you are and if you're a good fit for their lab. So now then, in regards to getting interviews and replies, this can be a little bit more difficult and frustrating, but let me explain why. So as you may imagine, researchers have a lot on their hands. They often practice, they teach, they have all sorts of commitments outside research, so they might be slower to answer and you need to respect that. However, some might never reply or might never open that email. Usually, out of like 50 emails that I sent, I get less than 10 replies. Half of those saying that uh, they don't have a spot or they're not interested and the other half wanting to do an interview. At the end, you can even end up with like only one interview and very, very few replies out of like the dozens of emails that you would have sent. And when I first started in research, I found this very difficult because you spend so much time and effort to write this nice letter and then you realize you don't even get a reply for most of them. So I'm not saying this to discourage you, but it's the reality. It is what it is. You need to put a lot of work and research and just hope for the best. One thing that you should know though is that some researchers or institutions don't allow emails that come from external institutions or like random email addresses. And on that subject, make sure that you're sending it from your institutional email if you have one. Or consider changing your email address if you have the same one since the beginning of high school, like skaterboy95 at gmail.com, because I can almost guarantee you that they won't answer you. Then obviously, depending on where you are and what the customs are, you can maybe wait like a week or two before sending a follow-up email about your inquiry. And then after that, uh, maybe a week later, and if they don't answer and you're really, really interested in that lab, try finding another member of the lab, um, a phone number, or by simply emailing the department at the institution or something like that. And if they don't answer either, well, there's not much you can do about it, really, unless you want to go there in person, but due to COVID, I don't think you can, but yeah. So my last piece of advice to you would be to start early. If it's for a summer project, for example, I would usually recommend starting around like November or even like December because the places often uh, get filled pretty quickly. If you're doing it after Christmas, no worry, you can still find a few places here and there, but your chances might be reduced. So just start as early as possible. Take into account everything that I've said here. Uh, it takes quite a lot of time and it's time consuming. Send a lot of emails to a lot of different labs, a lot of different researchers, talk to your teachers, ask your advisors if they know someone, ask your friends if they know someone. It would be a easy way, you know, to find a researcher. Um, but just send a lot of emails. Most of them, like I said, might not reply. Doesn't matter like how good your grades are, how good your CV is, some might just not look at your email and it is what it is. There's nothing you can do about it. And don't get discouraged if it doesn't work now. You're gonna have like another year to do it. You can even do some during your semester, but be careful with that. You need to have some good time management skills. But if you follow these very simple tips and answer these questions that I mentioned in my video, 
you should increase your chances by quite a lot. I don't have a number of, or a statistic, uh, but by having all these precise detailed answers uh, as to why you're interested and why you want to participate in this specific research, it's going to get noticed by the researchers. They're going to appreciate you putting the time and the effort um, if they do answer. But if I did it, anyone can do it. So don't get discouraged. Keep on sending emails. One day you're going to find one. Uh, if it's not the one that you liked, well, you're going to find another one, which might be even better. You don't know. So I hope that was helpful for all of you. Um, I wish you good luck with your research and finding that research position. If you didn't see my previous videos, I'm gonna link them right here. If you don't follow me on Instagram, you can follow me at ov.med. If you're not subscribed yet, please do so. You can also leave a comment or ask me a question um, on my DMs on Instagram or in the comments down below. And see you in the next week's video.